Well, Libya's neighbors, meanwhile, have expressed concern at, about the security situation at the border with uh, their country. Let's speak to Jamal El Shail. He joins us live from Sidi Bahraini, that's near the Egypt Libya border. Uh, Jamal, tell us what's happening there. How's the traffic at the border? Yeah, at the uh, city of Saloum, right at the border, as you can see behind me, this is the land crossing just a few meters away from Libya. Um, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of Egyptians who have been coming through the border in the past uh, half an hour or so since I have come here, many of them telling harrowing tales of death and destruction inside Libya. There are also hundreds of doctors who have come from within Egypt, from Alexandria, from Cairo, and across the country with medical supplies that have been, they say, flooding in from across the world. The military on its part here, the Egyptian military, has set up uh, a makeshift hospital maybe five kilometers or so away from the border where they are um, preparing to treat any wounded or injured um, people who cross the border fully. Jamal, uh, how is the security at the border? How are the Egyptian authorities making sure that uh, not just anyone enters Egypt, that it's just Egyptian citizens returning home? Well, as it stands now, the traffic is obviously only one way to a large part. Um, no one is allowed to go into Libya unless they are either Libyans or, um, to some extent, some journalists. In terms of those coming the other way from Libya, obviously anyone holding Egyptian papers in terms of passports or other forms of identification are being allowed in um, and obviously for them to you we have to bear in mind there is a large population of Egyptian expatriates in Libya some estimate up to one million and all those um, do frequently come back and forth in fact um, many of the Bedouin tribes here in uh, this part of uh, Western Egypt um, part of their clans are originally Libyan and spill over across the border it's very well known um, that there is a close uh, demographic uh, and uh, geo social uh, bond between the two countries so um, the security that is in place um, is tight to a certain, certain extent but it is in all meaning of the word some sort of humanitarian and there are uh, the main concern here is trying to provide by the Egyptian government and by Egyptian NGOs non-governmental organizations medical supplies more than it is to assess the security situation the uh, people who have been uh, returning to Egypt what are they saying about uh, the situation in inside Libya tell us more about that well, there are tales of people who say they, that uh, helicopter gunships and uh, other Air Force uh, um, planes were used to literally uh, blindly bomb uh, civilian areas. There are tales of mercenaries knocking on Libyan homes and uh, um, slaughtering people. These are all obviously um, tales that I'm hearing. Um, many people have rushed to us with uh, flash memory sticks and others saying that they contain uh, images of uh, these horrific scenes. Uh, we've only just arrived literally in the past half an hour, so um, we're still trying to uh, assess and gather as much uh, information as possible. But there is uh, clearly uh, a horrific tale to be told, and that's just simply before speaking to people. If you just look at the uh, faces of many of the people who are escaped, it really does tell a picture of um, of horror, a picture of war in all meaning of the word. Um, what details there are, um, they will be unfolding shortly. As we all know, uh, the Libyan government, the Libyan regime, has cracked down tremendously on media operations there, on communication operations there, and therefore it is difficult to verify and validate exactly how bad the situation is. But if we are to take the word of those coming out, that situation is extremely bad, to say the least. Okay, thank you very much, Jamal al Shail, reporting live from Sidi Bahraini there at the border between Egypt and Libya.